Okay. Can we start? Yes, it's okay. Okay. Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, I'm Annalisa Tarquini. I'm the program director of the Master of Science in, in Luxury Management. And today I have the pleasure to be with um, a former student and a current student, both in the, uh, enrolled in the hospitality program, but with uh, two interesting backgrounds. Uh, so let me introduce uh, Dermot O'Sullivan, a current student from Ireland, and then uh, Bavin Patel, um, who is actually our, our guest speaker for tonight, who will be interviewed by Dermot, who is um, actually the financial and administrative coordinator at the Porsche Center, <clears throat> at the Porsche Center in, uh, in Atlanta. So welcome, uh, welcome guys. Uh, so before I, I let you start, um, uh, I let I let you start with your with your conversation. Uh, I invite our guests to to write your Q and your questions on the on the Q and A part. So and then uh, we hope we will be able to have an um, an interactive um, session together. Um, Dermot, Bavin, stage is yours. Perfect. Thank you, Anlisa. You're very welcome, Bavin. Thank you. Thank you. You have a very interesting uh, journey. You have had uh, from IEM all the way to Atlanta, Georgia. Um, you have a fascinating story to tell, and, and I would like to just welcome you to, to give us a few minutes on, on your own brief history uh, and, and journey from uh, how you came to IUM and, and then just subsequently afterwards, what, what, uh, how, how that happened for you. Sure. Well, thank you, everyone. It truly is an honor to be speaking with you guys. Um, I started, I started at Georgia State. Um, I attended undergraduate school here, um, right outside, um, right outside uh, Atlanta, and you know, through my undergraduate program, I was always a hospitality major, and you know, it's always it's in my DNA, it's in my blood. Always um, growing up in the hotel business, um, family business, so you know, it's like I I really didn't know anything else. All of my jobs throughout high school and college were always in. Um, the hospitality industry with hotels. Um, and then the senior, my senior year of college at Georgia State, um, I attended, I had the opportunity to go, uh, go on the study abroad uh, program to Europe. And I was the last student to sign up. And, you know, my parents really encouraged me to take that opportunity and go. And part of the visit was to, uh, we stopped by IUM and Annalisa gave us a a presentation on the luxury goods and service program. And the year that I would be attending would be the launch of the hospitality program. And, you know, I had, I, I really had no ambitions of going to graduate school. You know, the plan was after I graduate, I would move to New York city, work my family, you know, have a small apartment and, you know, just have that life. And after visiting IUM and have this present um, and hearing this presentation and finding more about this uh, program, I just, you know, I told myself, like, let me give it a shot and if this would, you know, work. And it was, you know, a big change for me, a very exciting change, a great challenge. And through them, I got in and, and, you know, Monaco changed my life. The experience there like we're not especially coming someone coming from a small town in the states so you know IUM changed my life um really and it it followed me through you know my graduated I got hired at Porsche um and been here ever since Excellent. Um, well, it's great to, to hear that kind of passion and, and the fond memories that you have from IUM and how, how it's helped you in your career um, so far. Can, can, you, can you share some of your fondest memories in IUM and also perhaps touch on how uh, IUM has helped fast track your career and to arrive where you are now? So, you know, the about being in Monaco, you know, I would have to say two main things is one is the people you know I had the most incredible classmates from all over the world sitting in one classroom sharing different experiences um, and you know really 
ma build, making my own family there. Like we're all that we had there, you know, and just, I still have such a tight bond with many of my classmates. And, you know, that's what I always encourage current students like take advantage of that opportunity and be like hold that relationship you know long term you never know when it will help you um in the future um the second thing was just being in monaco like it, it truly is an inspiration being there you know looking out at the mediterranean sea just and just seeing all of the success and you know what the life style is because it's a very it's a bubble that monaco is you know that when, when we're in monaco it, it does become a bubble where you get used to this sort of lifestyle and then you know when we go back home it's like it's a reality and you know it's you get a taste of what monaco can be and you know what if you you know work hard and successful this is the life you can have and you know that was sort of the the biggest, biggest part in Monaco, like my biggest memory, you know, the events, the classes is such a unique experience. And, you know, I, I can never get tired about talking about Monaco. You know, it's been like five, uh, it's been seven years and I still remember. 2014, like yes. Yeah. So it's like, it's such a, it's such an amazing experience that, that, you know, it really does help with, um, with any sort of job interview. It's such a great conversation starter because, you know, a CV will only get you so far. It's, it's you know, it's about you, the person, when, especially in hospitality, like you can always teach someone process. You can't teach someone how to speak with people, how to interact, how to make that, you know, relationship. Um, and really like, that's how, like, before I even got hired with Porsche, I was just interviewing at just places that I found on LinkedIn that, you know, that would be luxury in the States. And, you know, I came across, well, aside from Porsche, but like all these places I was applying at, they would just see, wow, Monaco. It's like, didn't even know there was a graduate school there. Like it's, it, it's so out there that it's so interesting to talk about. It's a great conversation starter. And it really eases, you know, you as a, like being interviewed, you know, because you're, you're starting off by talking about something so natural, something that was amazing that, you know, impacted your life. So that's how I went in with uh, my, my first interview with Porsche. I started as an intern and I've, you know, grown in the, in this role, my role has evolved. Um, you know, my title really doesn't do justice to what I really do at Porsche. Um, but that's what, that's sort of how I got, this is how I use like sort of IUM through the interview process, but also all the things I learned there on just what, you know, what luxury is and everything around it to help me with, you know, what I do in my day-to-day -day job at Porsche. All right, certainly. And, and, and I know we can agree with you there. You know, there's a lot of people that are just incredibly curious about Monaco and, and, and you know, it seems to be just that the brand in itself has evokes a lot of, of warmth and oozes luxury in people's minds, even if they've never been here. They're all been exposed to the photos and, and the images and some Hollywood movies that have been here. Um, so definitely, I can see how it, how it has helped you. And, and I'm, I'm hoping that we'll all have the same look that you've had um, in, in the next few months. Um, you, you spoke just very briefly there on, on advice regarding networks for mm -hmm. you, you. You kept in contact with a lot of your, your classmates and that. You know, so that was a lovely nugget of advice for, for our current students. Have you, have you anything else while we are on that subject? Just any other little uh, advice that you'd like to give our listeners and share with something? You know, like with, you know, you guys are in a very lucky position right now, very unique position. You know, you don't realize it until the moment's over on, you know, all the relationships you guys could have built, all the, you know, aside from your classmates, but any people in your school, like the businesses around you, like, it, depending on what you want to do with your future, it's, it, 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 there's nothing wrong with, you know, reaching out to people like that, that shyness that, that need, you know, that, that goes away, you know, it's, you're only, you guys have a short time left there and take advantage of those opportunities because when, once it's gone, it's, it's just memories after that. And then it, it becomes, it becomes challenging when, you know, for looking for inspiration and looking for 
those net looking for those opportunities to help you with your own job in your own career um but i always just say like whenever you're going into an interview or or you know and any sort of ambition don't be afraid like you know you you know the worst that could happen the worst could happen is is a rejection and don't be afraid of rejection it it only is supposed to make you stronger and give you more motivation and to think differently and to be creative you know um with I really had no idea what I wanted to do after I graduated, but, you know, I sort of, I just had to, I had to start somewhere because I know my plan B was to go into the family business um, with, uh, you know, with hotels and everything. And it, I, all, I just wanted to do something different because I, I was the first, I was the first um, kid in my family to go to graduate school. So, you know, I really wanted to do something outside the box. I picked an incredible place to go. It's, you know, it's, it's not like going to, you know, a prestige school here in the US, but getting to go to a place that it's just, it, it, your mind thinks so different when you're there. And it's just that inspiration, enthusiasm, and just, it, 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 it made me think, it, it made me think very differently on how I, you know, pursue my professional career my personal life like how I just approach life because it's it it really does impact um well at least for me it really did impact my life there yeah. so, sorry there, Mark, there is one th comment actually from uh, one attendees and uh, who went to Atlanta as well actually we have somebody who comes from your same region so maybe he she can follow your yeah, the same path uh, you had and then uh, there is um, <clears throat> there is one first question maybe that can oops that can um, uh, maybe link with what you will say later on. Uh, coming from the hospitality business, how did you end up in the, at Porsche? This is what Aureli is asking. So with so with Porsche, I don't I work I work as I work in the Porsche Financial or Porsche Experience Center Atlanta. So it's a customer facing business. And I handle, you know, with starting as an intern, you know, I mentioned like my, my role evolved. So I was always good with numbers. I was always good at, you know, strategy and just taking, taking, you know, what I can do from an internship and, and trying to grow from it. So I was just on the, I had a link, LinkedIn premium account while I was looking for jobs. And I was honestly just searching luxury internships or anything related to luxury, because especially, you know, in the Atlanta area, you know, in the U.S., we're more consumers of luxury than, you know, just, you know, having the, the offices in Europe of all these um, luxury good companies. But, you know, I came across something that would fit between luxury and hospitality, you know, it being a customer facing business. And the year that I became an intern, it was still being constructed. So I was able to join. Um, I, I applied through LinkedIn. I got an interview the next day and you know, the first thing the recruiter goes, you went to school in Monaco? Like th that, that's where like the connection happens. And I got, I interviewed, I got hired the same day. And then my journey, you know, I progressed within the role. I went from an intern to a contractor, to um, a coordinator, and then to a manager. And throughout the years, my responsibilities have changed too. So with you know at the Porsche Experience Center it's a it's a driver development course you know the best way to put it you know when I talk to people and explaining what it is is like think of a hotel think of a full service hotel where our guest rooms is the driving experiences and then you have all those other amenities we have a business center we have large corporate events there's a retail store there's food service there's a restaurant cafe simulator lab um a, a, it it's a full it's a building with all the Porsche conglomerates in one and it's just it's an amazing place to work and I take you know a lot of the things that I've learned throughout my life in hospitality and I apply it in the business because customers are paying you know for these experiences and we're there to give them you know amazing time and make memories for them great answer and it's true we live in an experience economy so you've brought the experience from the hospitality element, coupled with what you've experienced here in Monaco, 
and and you've brought that to the experience center of Porsche. So there's an there's a natural link as well if you actually scratch deep enough. Um, and, and you've brought that into the financial and administrative department uh, and where you are. So it's great to see the passion that you had for hospitality was never lost. It, it, it is serving you well in, in your current role and, and, and future roles. And if I may ask, what's, what's next on the radar? Where, how high can you grow? Because you seem to be flying through the, the, the promotions. <laughs> it, 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 takes, it takes, um, takes a long time. It takes a lot of hard work. Um, you know, sometimes we all have to do things that we don't necessarily enjoy, but you always just remember long term, you know, always think in even in applying for anything, always think for a position, if it doesn't seem interesting at first, but just think how you can grow that position, how, where you want to be end up in five years versus two years, you know, um, but next for me is I definitely would like to stay with the company. Um, and, you know, I, we, I work in the marketing, I report department because it's an experience center. So experiential marketing is the department and I would like to grow in it. You know, um, there's a, one of our other colleagues, um, he manages our Porsche, Porsche track experience in Birmingham, Alabama. It's our driving school. And then he uh, manages um, our travel club um, where we, where a customer sign up for um, eight to 10 day pro, uh, driving programs across the US. Uh, from city to city, state to state, having unique experiences. And I really would like to, you know, manage to embark on that uh, side of Porsche and really um, see how that would go. But, you know, I still, even for me, I still see um, opportunities, improvements within myself that I need to make um, in order to get to that position. Okay. But I definitely, it's like, you know, like how IUM is in my DNA, it's like Porsche is in my DNA now. Yeah, it seems like a perfect fit, doesn't it? Yeah. Sorry, talking about the fit, uh, Sanyukta, sorry if I, um, I pronounce you uh, wrongly, uh, she would like, to, or he would like to know, being an international student, was it tough for you to fit in Monaco? And uh, what would you choose, what, what would you choose Monaco over uh, any other country? Absolutely. Um, it wasn't, I, I felt like it wasn't, it, it's a balance, right? It's there. I'm, I'm, I'm very like, I'm very talkative person. I'm very like a hospitable person. So really? you know, I try to, <laughs> <laughs> I try to make, I try to make, you know, everything into sort of a, like a, a positive situation because I was just so excited to be there, but it was my first time living on my own. <laughs> you know, my parents came to drop me off and it's just, it, I think it was more harder for them, but, you know, I, it was, it was a lot to take in and, you know, but it was also, and think of it as an opportunity because it's like, there's so many people from all over the, like from, from everywhere. And, you know, they're sort of in the same bubble. Like you're not alone. If, you know, if you feel, if, if it feels like tough to fit in because, uh, you know, everyone's new to the program and, you know, with, that's like one of the things that like with our hospitality students, like, you know, we're all talkative, we're all have like amazing stories to share. So, you know, at times it would be tough, but I would, I wouldn't pick any other place because it's so unique. It's so, you know, it's, you know, it's like, I'm, I wouldn't change the way that I approach in choosing Monaco and attending Monaco. And then, you know, going, getting an MBA at Georgia state, you know, it's a, you know, same sort of um, um, credentials in a way, like it means sort of the same thing, but it's just, it's more to share and it's more interesting and just the lifestyle. Thank you. Dermot? Yeah, um, so, so from, a, from a point of view of, of your career path, it's very much, even though you're still good, the number crunching, you're still, fascinated by all that but it is really down the people side of it to, you know it fits with your personality you're clearly someone who's very outgoing is, is good with people um we, we in order to really really go as far as you can with Porsche will, will, will you need to stay or will you actually need to look at any potential European positions uh, to bring you back here um or, or is it 
American based from, from well, your point of view for your section that you're interested in in Spain? In? It's definitely, it would be, I would have to be here. Um, just, you know, I, I would love to say with Porsche Cars for North America, it's the, because, you know, I, I created sort of a platform. I started this journey here and, you know, it's just, I like where things are currently. I have a good balance between work and life. Um, and, you know, it's, it, I love what I do, you know, and just, there's a lot of things growing within, you know, our own company to, for, you know, you know, to sort of keep me entertained too, because, you know, that's, that's sometimes, that's a very important thing to remember that like, you always have to remember, you have to do what you, whatever you're doing, you have to love it. You have to, you know, have passion for it because then it will feel like a job more than anything else. Um, you know, just, I get so excited to even go and walk through the office and just, you know, can't wait, like what new opportunities there are and what, you know, what else can I do? And, you know, it's a very lean company. It's very, um, um, I work, I work with a great team. So it's, um, I'm here for the long run with them. And when you look at the impact of COVID, like there's been a huge amount of disruption to markets and, and especially over mm -hmm. this part of the world. How has that affected a portion in the last 12 months in your own uh, headquarters there? Well, at least for the Experience Center, um, we, our state <laughs> reopened um, shortly after we uh, shut down. Like it was maybe like a month or two that we were closed, but we reopened back in May for um, our customers and we sort of changed up our um our program where usually the instructor sits in the same car as the customer and you know showing them the ins and outs on how to become a better driver and we sort we changed it to a lead follow program so now everyone gets their own vehicle and they listen in um through a radio to to listen to the instructor um oh, so and, you know say that again it's an even better experience so now that there's uh, absolutely everyone gets their own <laughs> Absolutely. And like, you know, we, we did, you know, put in a lot of um, uh, safety measures. So, you know, and it's been, it's been amazing. It's, you know, when people are just, you know, forced to sort of constrain themselves and, you know, work from home and then we reopen our experience center for someone to, for people to come out and, you know, get a new normal in a way, like in getting to just have a, you know, peace of mind and getting to do something refreshing and fun and relaxing, like, and, it really did. It was a it was a difficult, challenging year, but it it really it was it was a good thing. It was a good thing that we did reopen because um, it was it was shown to be very successful. And for the million dollar question for all our listeners out there, how many interns are you going to take in Portugal? <laughs> and Elisa, they, you know, we hire we hire a good amount of interns. Um, through you know just through many different program uh, many different departments if, if it's pr or event marketing or marketing communications or after sales or corporate development like it every department um have have interns and contractors um and then it's up to you on how you're going to be able to differentiate yourself how to you okay. know how to make how to think differently how to you know what you can bring to the table within the department for you to continue on. Um, but yeah, the, and there are a lot of opportunities and as simple as, you know, applying through LinkedIn and just, you know, going, go, even applying through the corporate website. And now you so, know someone here, so if anyone's ever interested. So it means that they can connect with you on LinkedIn. Absolutely. Okay. And then, so you are the proof that LinkedIn works. Absolutely. Because sometimes it's a, it seems a kind of myth. Uh, there are thousands of people applying to the same position through LinkedIn. So it, is, it, it will be very hard or barely impossible to, to get a call. But actually you are the, the, the physical proof that this is, <clears throat> this is real. And you know, like through LinkedIn, it's just not applying for a position, right? It's, you see, let's just say you find a position you like and you found it on LinkedIn and you apply for it you know, I had a premium account, right? And I had it for that short period, but you see, you can see, you know, who else works there. It, it, there's nothing wrong with reaching out 
to them and just seeing like, you know, trying to find out like who works in, in the HR department, who works in this to like try to build that connection. You can see who your connections are with, you know, your, your friends or anything of that sort. So then, and, and just making, making, introducing yourself and, you know, showing them. And I wrote like, when I applied, I reached out to anyone I could in HR and just letting them know, hey, I applied for this internship and, you know, here are some supporting documents. Like I actually sent some reports that we did, um, like even our group projects are, and to show <laughs> like, you know, like this is, this is, you know, what I'm capable of. Like you have to get them to know how you think if you only have, a, you know, a very quick, short time to get their attention. So I take every opportunity, even if it's helpful or not, but like it, you, you know, you do, at least I know I did everything I could to, to get someone's attention, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's so important, isn't it? Just to take the opportunities. I think it's very encouraging from our point of view as well to, to see someone who's coming from the background that you've come from, the studies that you have done, and then to go down this track, uh, excuse the pun, but you know, it, it gives, um, it just gives a wider scope and it just kind of makes us realize it's a, it's a, large, it's a big world out there. Uh, there's huge opportunities. And just because it's hospitality doesn't mean you're pigeons into a cruise ship or a hotel or, you know, and, and it's actually to, just to say, okay, hey, there's, there's companies out there that are, that are employing uh, people with our skill set. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> Sorry, Dermot, uh, there are two, there, there are a few questions. Allora, one, um, Fadia is asking, I would like to know if after you graduated, you graduated from IUM, you pursued another degree in another school and which degree you studied at IUM in Monaco? So after I attended, so I, I earned an um, undergraduate degree from Georgia State in um, hospi uh, hospitality administration. Mm. And then um, I earned a master's in uh, luxury hospitality and event management. And um, I, I chose the, uh, doing the internship and the, the case analysis um, throughout the year. But throughout that, I, um, when I was writing the report, I went, actually went back to work in the hotels. Like, you know, um, throughout my college, college life here, I've, I worked at um, hotels such as like Renaissance, JW Marriott, um, uh, you know, smaller Marriott franchises. But, um, and I actually, working at like in uh, guest reception or elite concierge and um, I wrote my analysis report and then came back for graduation and then I um, I just started applying for you know um, just jobs and that's how I came across Porsche and and look I had even I didn't even know that like Porsche's headquarters were in Atlanta <laughs> and I just went past and I'm like hey man like let me let me see I'm like they have a corporate building you know, it's not, I'm not, it's not a dealership, but I'm like their corporate office is here. So I'm like, let me just do my research. And then that's how I came across um, the position. Very simple. Yeah. Okay. And then what are the opportunities uh, that IUM opened for you? The opportunities, I would say the, the main thing, it, it made me, it made me more inspired and made me think more differently and creatively. Um, and I think I like, I don't know like how, if I would, I'm like, oh, if I didn't go to IUM, how, you know, how life would be right now. But, you know, I, I think that I took everything I learned from IUM and I applied it to, you know, my, my, throughout my journey with Porsche, like if it's like, you know, learning about, certain companies you know like some of the companies that we done papers on we actually partner with them through our you know our brand sponsor sponsorships um you know e either with you know like with red bull or with um with michelin and or with you know doing all these big fun events throughout the u.s um and just really seeing seeing like you know all the things that we learn about and how like sort of the 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 partnership and the man like the the, the sponsorships within one of both companies come together um, and how both companies benefit from it. They experience with Delta and Porsche, same thing. That works, yeah. 
How are we Dermot, how you go. Are we, how are we for time? Are we okay, uh, question, question wise? Yes, yes, yes. We have uh, some more questions. I will let you go ahead, and then I go. I come back. Just at the start, you spoke about how you know, from the family point of view, how you started and the hospitality and that. Have they come around to the idea that you're gone, or you're a Porsche man, and uh, you won't be coming back to the hospitality industry per se, or are they still crossing their fingers, thinking we we get I it back? It, it would always, you know. I think now they would be they would be shocked if I came back. But it's um, you know at the beginning they you know they're like I, I guess at the beginning they were support, a little supportive, and now I think they're just like yeah, let him do his thing, and you know we'll take care of the family business. But you know in I just had I I had to make that decision. Um, long time ago it was tough but you know it, it's 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 never going to escape me like it's you know it's it's with our family so like it's it's just, it's going to be there um well, there what, so. there, yeah, of course <laughs> <laughs> but i'm sure they see how passionate you are and how well you're doing and, and uh, your absolutely career certainly on oh the yeah right they, track. they're very proud yes yeah well done well done and elisa yes actually there is a bogdan is asking to sell luxury cars, what personal qualities do you think are important for a great success? Actually, Bogdan, thank you for this question because uh, uh, year after year, we have more and more students interested in the car business. The students who are joining our program. So actually, I think having you uh, coming from Porsche is a, is a kind of dream for, uh, for, our, uh, for our dear guest. Mm -hmm. So it, you, you know, main thing, you have to be a people person. It, to sell luxury cars like that is a huge investment for you know for many people like and you know like I said this before like you can always teach someone process and procedures you can't teach people how to be hospitable how to connect with one you know how to connect with people you know that's what that's what you know I think would be the main main um characteristic that you need to have um and also just being very being organized being being very communicative and you know and knowing knowing the product inside and out you have to be able to sell it you know and when it when when you're trying to sell something that is very expensive it's like it it's that's what it is you really have to sell the product you have to convince them to buy it it's funny, I, I just jump in on there. We, we're doing a project for uh, Dr. Petit and, and we, we spoke with a lot of HR directors in luxury properties and they, they went to the, like the exact same. Like we asked them, what are the new skills? What are, what are people looking for? And they said, soft skills, soft skills, soft skills, soft skills. We can, we can teach everybody the hard skills if they're interested and passionate. But in, in this industry, you, you got to have those soft skills. And, and so it's fabulous to see you identify it as well uh, from your professional experience and, and that it's, it's quite encouraging. And, and it's something that our program is, uh, here has it's, it's worked so much and there's so many presentations and there's so many group projects and that's what it's developing. It's, uh, um, you know, so it, it is, uh, it's fascinating to see it uh, transport itself, I suppose. Absolutely. I uh, actually, I don't have any more questions. So Dermot, I'll let you go ahead with, uh, with, your own, um, with your own ones if you have more. I've gone through the list of, of ones that we were talking about. Um, is, is there, Bavin, what, what are, is there anything that we've missed? Is there anything that you, you'd like to share with, with, with the students, a uh, parting yeah. message or words of wisdom? Um, anything else? Well, you know, um, I think we pretty much covered everything, but, you know, good luck with all the students starting their internships or thesis. Um, you know, it's, you're part of the, you're part of now of like the few, the small population that gets to have this incredible experience and journey. And, you know, you know, don't, don't, you know, lose, lose touch with the, your classmates and your friends because it, it it's a, um, it's one of the greatest like assets that you guys could have there. Like it's one of the greatest things that, you know, you, you may, you have these friends and you have these connections and, just make them to your uh, benefit and advantage. 
Absolutely. Well, it is. It's, it's important, isn't it? Networking is going to be such a huge part of Absolutely. business going forward, just not just from a personal point of view, but just staying in, in, in uh, the networking game and, and for further opportunities in, in your own career as well. So, um, Absolutely. Yeah. So would you recommend IUM to, to, the, to, the, to the, our dear guests who are following our, our conversation tonight? Absolutely. Absolutely. Good, answer. <laughs> Good man, you're lucky. <laughs> It's, it's, it's no place like it. It really isn't. And, you know, just the unique experiences with the classes and getting to go to all the different events, like, you know, like Top Mark, like I, my first tennis match was the Rolex Masters, you know, going to the Monaco Yacht Show, like the Grand Prix. Like I hope we will be able to beat better again. And, we, we don't know if we will be able to, know, exactly. to do it again. <laughs> Unfortunately, this year, Bab, we, we had uh, online kind of things. There was, everything was, was, was shut down because of COVID, so we had nothing. Um, so we were deprived of all those opportunities. But uh, Annalise is going to invite us all back next year, I'm sure, with, with open arms for the Rolex Masters, VIP, uh, Tented Village, and and, uh, no, it should be, and everything. Huh? Uh, it should be back, actually. There, are, there is a hope. And actually, I got the uh, the news just yesterday morning that um, I will be in Dubai next year. With I should be in Dubai. You see, Mama, bye. I should be in Dubai next year with uh, with hospitality and fashion students. Yeah, I'm sad for us, but that's what I mean. Year. <laughs> that's exactly what I mean. I couldn't come back again. <laughs> There are opportunities, of course, if uh, COVID this year wasn't, wasn't nice mm -hmm. with us, um, nicer than expected, because actually, at least we were, our school was open. But of course, it were, we could not leave the same experiences, but um, we live together at, uh, during, your, uh, during your, uh, your experience, uh, for sure. We've, we've had a great year. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And um, as, as there are... There are um, Actually, De De Diana is asking uh, if you live if you lived in Monaco, and then she's saying that she will visit Monaco, the Monaco Yacht Show next next uh, next year. Because actually, the Monaco Yacht Show will take place, but we don't know in which conditions. Uh, if if we can um, be part of it, actually, Dermot worked with his colleagues on a fabulous project that is uh, how to promote Monaco as the capital of yachting. And then they were giving incredible suggestions to the organization to improve this experience for, for everybody. So we hope that they will take into consideration some of, some of the examples, but it, so, uh, we hope so. But you know, back to the questions, um, uh, Bavin, <clears throat> they were, Diana Dina is asking if you, if you lived in Monaco. I lived in Cap Dai and I got the incredible opportunity to walk on the side on the Mediterranean just and and that walk every morning was just just pure bliss just getting to <laughs> because like you, I'm I, I'm certainly not used to that here we don't have that here like and that's just that's just a you know a simple thing just looking out and just you know it's like wow can't believe I'm here like yeah. that feeling just never went away. Yeah, it's pretty special, isn't it? Yeah, especially yeah, when you're not it, from here, when you're not French or Italian. Exactly. You, know, you, you appreciate it so much more. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, there is a, uh, just a strange names tonight. <laughs> uh, a student from somewhere. I'm studying a master in law in law currently, but I love the luxury sector and I'm inspired to hear that you made the transition the, the, sorry, <coughs> I'm inspired to hear that you made the transition you have from hospitality to the luxury car industry. So actually it is possible that you're coming with a background and then you can go to absolutely other directions. But even Dermot, actually, Dermot, can you take, just spend two words about your personal background and then why you are at Taiwan? Well, my background is, is... Uh, hospitality. Um, so I, I'm a mature student in, in one way. Uh, I, I, I did a degree and a master's 20 years ago. And then I went playing professional sport for, for seven or 10 years. And then I went back into hospitality, which like that in my family are hotels and restaurants and nightclubs in Ireland. So um, 
I, I was I was doing that back in Ireland and I, I decided to transfer it and come to the south of France. So I've been working in, in the south of France in, in Maison La Note, which is a luxury hospitality and event management company and, and they do their boutiques in, in Paris as well. Um, and, and so we were, you know, exposed to all the elements and, and the values that we we've, uh, you associate with luxury um, and hospitality. And then with, since COVID, it's just been put on ice. So I suppose from my point of view, I, took, I looked at it as an opportunity and said, okay, I, um, six months, nine months, where nobody's going to be working. Uh, what can I do? And I, I went to look to try and add value to my CV and to be curious and see what, what I can gain in this downturn. And so I, I joined, I, I, I searched around and I found the IUM was just a perfect, perfect fit for me uh, to help leverage my career and, and to really add value, curiosity, and, and to expose me to, to everything that was to be gained here. And then, of course, to use the huge network that IUM has um, to get on to the next stage. Uh, so we're quite similar in a lot of ways, Pavan. So you give me a huge amount of... Uh, Hope. <laughs> um, hope and passion, yeah. Between between Bavin and between uh, IUM, we're no certain. But it's you know it, it's for anybody listening that is wondering whether they want to do a master's uh, in Monaco or not, just do it. Don't even you know find a way to do it. It is it's going to be the best year you're going to have. And I know Bavin, we spoke a couple of a couple of evenings ago, um, and and just shared some stories about it. And it's just an incredible experience. And you know, Absolutely. you can do it at 22, you can do it at 43, whatever age, you know, it, there, there's no limits here. It's, you come with the right attitude and, and it's just a, a really, really worthwhile experience. Uh, you're never too young to learn uh, and to be exposed to the type of, of professionals that we've been exposed to uh, with Annalise and her team is, is just as priceless. You can't, you couldn't ask for a better course. So um, I hope I've given you a, the answer uh, you were looking for, but no. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. Great. Yes. Um, so there are some compliments. This has been a great presentation. I wanted to tell you I'm in September 2021, but you will apply for next year. Dina, we wait for you. And Your then brother. actually, Come. Uh, so please connect with, uh, actually use LinkedIn. Uh, to start building your own network and then connect with current and past students and then ask them about their experience privately because of course uh, I'm talking about my baby so naturally uh, I'm, I'm very I'm very passionate about what I'm doing but I think that the best uh, this is why we are also organizing this kind of career talk because it is very good to listen what current and past students uh, have in common and then for me is a such a, um, how can I say uh, as a big satisfaction to see past students succeeding like uh, like Bavin and then uh, Dermot. So we wait for you in the, in the coming years to come back Absolutely. and then to take the... the I'm going the straight to Porsche. I'm going <laughs> straight to Porsche in Atlanta, Georgia. So the, the last, the oh, last well, question. I'm so sorry. Uh, what, uh, what would you recommend to current graduates where to, uh, where to start to land a job in luxury sector? What would you like to, what would you recommend to, to graduate students to start with? Well, firstly, they need to come to IUM, do the, <laughs> do the masters, mm -hmm. and then you go on. It's a natural progression. Honestly, you, you know, it is, it, it, it makes so much sense. And it's, it's like, I, I did one straight out of, of uh, after graduate school. It is the perfect time to do one, but there is no, it, it, after that, you can do it at any age, uh, 43. So. Um, it's a little bit harder. I took advantage of COVID and, and hopefully there won't be more COVID. But, you know, um, connections is another opportunity, I suppose. Bavin, you, you'd have a, a different approach to this if you wanted to look Absolutely. at it. Absolutely. And even even uh, like for me, like right, right after I graduated, you know, you're still in that motivation mindset. Like, you know, I like I need to find a job, but you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with starting, starting off at the bottom in any sector and working your way Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Like you're on the right track, you're on the right track. But all, you know, don't, yeah, exactly, like, don't limit yourself, don't be, don't be scared, like, it's, and if, if, if there's ever rejection in your life, like, let that only make you stronger and motivate you to go forward. 
you know, and IUM really did help me with, you know, with a lot of my sort of like a lot of the things that like I sometimes would be nervous about like speaking in front of uh in front of class uh classmates and presentations and you know group projects like it just the, the topics are so unique the you know the discussions are so interesting that even even like within our own class like we some of the people that were like the shyest people from the start were then like you know like the most talkative like when it comes to class participation like and it's just the you're you're so intrigued to hear you know you're you're sitting in a class of like 20 students and 18 of them are from different countries from you know from all over the world like it's just it's so interesting to hear their take and you know opinions on whatever topic or discussion that's taking place like and it, it was just it, it made the, the class time so much fun and you know it just I, I, coming to IUM like I, I I couldn't wait like I couldn't wait like what you know what class we had next like I couldn't like I, I was just I was so intrigued and motivated just even coming to class and just knowing that wow I'm, I'm getting uh, earning a master's and Bevan you said the word I'm there earning, I, you said the word fun and it is, it, it is actually great fun there is huge fun through learning yeah you're going to be working pushed hard there's a huge amount of projects and presentations but they, they're, they're there for a reason and they work and and, and i've seen it you touched on it uh saying you're a couple of shy classmates at the beginning and, and i've seen it myself there's some some people in our class that were quite timid at the start and now they are just they love talking in front of a class um they're very very comfortable and and, and it's it's a skill and, and something that you need in the luxury industry um mm -hmm. whether you're selling jewelry or cars or, or uh in a hotel or, or whatever, you need those skills. Because uh, you, you have to be passionate. Therapy. You have to be so passionate about what you enjoy. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. Actually, you were so convincing that um, <clears throat> uh, Sanyukta, I think, after this session, I'm even more excited to attend the course. I was keeping my options open to other countries as well, but Monaco was something I was really interested in and now, I'm even more excited to take my application forward. So well done, guys. <laughs> you have a brilliant year. You will not regret it professionally, personally, and and, and awesome. it's just, just yeah, it's the best place in the world. Good. So I think that we can uh, um, close the 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 session. Uh, so there are other other comments here and there, but uh, so really thank you guys for your passion, and then. Uh, uh, it is always uh, good to, to, to talk to you, Bavina. I really hope to be able to come to see you in Atlanta uh, soon. Yeah. And then, uh, Dermot, for us, I see you very simply in class yeah. next week. <laughs> yes. Bavin, okay. I, just, I just like to say, Bavin, congratulations. And I, I wish you continued success in, in, in what you are doing. Uh, you're a fabulous uh, advocate for IUM and for Porsche cars and for your family. So uh, stay safe and, and uh, keep going. Well done. Mm -hmm. So, so just you know, but actually, are two or three thank years you, we are doing a project much. with Porsche. Maybe you don't know that. I, I was thinking, wow. our three years we're doing corporate no. projects with with uh, with Porsche, the the brand management students. So we maybe one day, voila, you will come wow, and you give incredible. us a project to us. Why not? Who yeah. knows? Yeah, Ale. Absolutely. So time to time to go. Time to play my my mom's role. But uh, yeah. really, yeah, she, she, she's, she's pulling uh, my jacket. <laughs> but uh, really, thank you so much Aww. for your time. And thank you so much for, our, for the time of our guests who decided to come and then follow this the fabulous discussion tonight. Perfect. Thank you very much. Well done. Ciao, thank grazie. You. Ciao, bye ciao, bye. ciao. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. See you, See you everyone.